OK, so now we're ready. Here's function behavior. Um, and it this is what we're going to talk about today. Increasing, decreasing, constant. We talked about increasing and decreasing yesterday. We're going to talk about it today along with what is constant. Um, relative maximum points and relative minimum points. We talked about that yesterday a little, only as it, re as it regards quadratics. <coughs> Today, we're going to be including other kinds of polynomials. Domain and range, we've already dealt with that, but we're still going to deal with it again today. And using graphs to help solve problems. Now, when we get back on the 29th, that's a Monday, we'll be talking about these behaviors. Um, what happens out on the ends of a graph near negative infinity and positive infinity? Um, what about zeros? What are multiplicities? What are turning points? The X and Y intercepts again, but they're important and writing functions in factored form. So we did most of this yesterday, but now we're going to look in depth. So here we go. Here is a function. Probably it's a piecewise defined function. We don't need to know that though. In math, we look at issues of increasing and decreasing from a left to right perspective. All right, well, we've got, we've got negative infinity out here, of course and positive infinity out here. And you've got a little roller coaster going from left to right. And here's the track. The graph is the track. Notice this track continues on, 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 on to the left. And this track continues on, on, on to the right. And the way we measure increasing and decreasing, if you want to call it that, or keep track of where it's occurring, we say where on the x-axis it's occurring. So, I want to change this color first. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to let this be increasing. That's going up from left to right. So this has just shown me I need to make this thicker. Let's go to two. OK. Now we're increasing in another place as well. From here. To here. Going up from left to right. Even though you have this arrow pointing down and to the left, that just signifies that the graph keeps going. 
but our roller coaster can only go left to right. Now, I'm going to let blue be decreasing. It's not blue. OK, this is blue. From left to right, the train is going down now, and all the people riding it are going, ah, like that. This is decreasing from left to right. And then, see we've used red and blue, and now we're gonna use green for constant. All right, constant is flat, it's a flat line. So we've got constant going in here, and we've got constant going in here, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. So I hope you brought your lunch with you because forever can take a long time. All right, let's look on the x-axis to see where this is occurring. Our x-axis continues out here. And notice that this part of the x-axis right here, and I'm going to increase the size on that as well. There. Much better. So from way out here, I mean, how far do you want to draw it? Um, this part of the x-axis is where this increase is occurring. And this, this part of the x-axis is where this increase is occurring. This part of the x-axis is where this decreasing is occurring. And This part of the x-axis, oh, could have just left it the way it, way it was, is also where this this constant part of the graph is occurring. Oh, and this right here, this part of the x-axis. So now we're looking at the x-axis and hopefully it's color coded well enough to go along with the increase, the decrease, the constant, the increase, the constant. So this is how we say where this is happening. This increase is occurring from negative infinity to negative seven. So if we list our intervals of increase, we're going to go from negative infinity to negative seven. And then there's another increase 
that occurs between negative two and negative one. Now, I'm sure you've already noticed we're not using brackets and we're not using use. Both of which are kind of troublesome, but it's just the way it is. Now, the reason we don't use brackets is that this relative maximum point cannot serve double duty. It can't be part of increasing and decreasing at the same time. This point cannot be part of decreasing and constant at the same time, which is what you'd be saying if you used brackets. So we just have to use parentheses. Now the fact that we don't connect these with a U is very different. The reason is we're just listing the intervals of increase. So you've just got to get used to um, the intervals of increase, decrease, and constancy. Forbid you to use brackets you're only going to use parentheses, and you're not going to put a U between these discontinuous intervals. You do that when you're uh, working with domain and range. You don't do it when you're use, working with increasing, decreasing, and constant. Okay. Now, Decreasing. Where is the decreasing occurring? Oh, well, be nice if I got it to be the right color. Decreasing. I guess I should just say decrease, but oh well. From negative seven to negative five. So this part of the x-axis. And constant, we're going to have two intervals on the x-axis for this as well. Negative five to negative two. and negative one to infinity. And that's how we've broken up the x-axis. Discussion. Okay. Well, here we have a relatively easy one. Wait, can you actually go back up really quick? Sure. Okay, thank you. Welcome. All right, let's see what colors I'm using. Increasing, decreasing, constant. Okay. 
Well, we've got. Decreasing. From way out here. Which is what this arrow means. So negative infinity all the way into negative five, uh, 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 negative four. That's where this decreasing is taking place. And constant is here. So here is where the constant part of the graph is taking place. And eh. Um, yeah, here, from here to positive infinity. And so here, what is here? Here is six, five, four. So the constant was from negative four to four, and the increasing is from four to infinity. So I will write these. Maybe. Increasing. over here from four to infinity and decreasing here negative infinity to negative four and constant. Oops, oh well. That was supposed to be blue, wasn't it? Yes. I keep telling myself I should just give up on color coding. Decreasing. From negative infinity to negative four. And constant from negative four to four. And so the x-axis is uh, where we make a map to tell people where to go to, um, to maybe work on the track. Well, go fix the track between negative four and four. Any discussion or questions? Okay. 
Now, we're going to talk about relative maximum points and relative minimum points. And we use the term relative because even though, even though this is like a hill, the top of a hill, and even though this is like a valley, this point <clears throat> is not the highest in the whole graph. For instance, this arm keeps going up and up and up, and very quickly, it points on this graph get higher than that point. So while this is not the absolute maximum point, it is the relative maximum point because in its own little area, it is the highest point. So the relative maximum point is the point negative seven, negative one. Don't get points, ordered pairs, mixed up with intervals. It's so easy to do. Okay, down here, this is like a little valley. And in its own little area, this is the lowest point. But notice the graph keeps getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower over here. So this point is not the absolute lowest point. It's just the relative lowest point. So our relative minimum point is this point here, negative three, negative nine. There, now let's go back and talk about the relative maximum and the relative minimum. The relative maximum is in the relative maximum point. It's also called the relative maximum, maximum. The relative maximum or the relative maximum value, either way is going to be the y-coordinate of the relative maximum point, negative one. And the relative minimum or relative minimum value is going to be the y-coordinate of the relative minimum point, negative nine. Now, these are also called, well, they're called two things as a group, to group them together. These are called extrema, that's the plural, or turning points. OK, 
okay. Um, and notice that when it comes to increasing, decreasing, and constant, you've got your increasing occurring, until it gets up there to that relative maximum point. And here starts at the relative minimum point. And goes forever to the right. Remember, we only can well, we only write where it's happening from left to right, but this is what the track is doing. And, uh, you know, kind of a disappointing ride because the, um, the decreasing occurs over this short area, you hardly even get your hands up. Notice here it's occurring between the relative maximum point and the relative minimum point. These are called turning points because uh, the relative maximum points and the relative minimum points are where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing and decreasing to increasing again at least in that graph right there. Okay, now, um, 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 so let's do that. Let's write the intervals of increase and the intervals of decrease. What you're going to see are these words the open interval, which means you only use parentheses. The open interval on which the graph is increasing. the graph or the function. I mean, they are the same. And that would be plural because there are two Let's see, from negative infinity to negative seven, which is the X coordinate of the relative maximum. And from the X coordinate of the relative minimum out to the right forever. So from negative three to infinity. but I wanted to show you the wording, the open interval on which, or intervals, on which the graph or the function are increasing. And then the open interval on which the graph or the function
are decreasing. from negative seven to negative three on the x-axis. Negative seven to negative three. So we always say where something is happening by finding values on the x-axis. Now you stop me if you have questions. So we've got relative maximum points and relative minimum points and relative maxima, that's plural, relative maximum here, there's only one. That's the Y coordinate, the relative minimum is the Y coordinate of the point. And then open intervals. Open intervals mean you use parentheses and not brackets. Okay. Now here, look at these solid dots. That means the graph actually starts here and goes to the right until it gets here. So let us increasing. Okay. Here the graph is increasing. So this is the part of the x-axis on which the increase occurs. Here the graph is constant. This is the part of the x-axis where the graph is constant. And here's the decrease kind of curvy. This is the part of the x-axis on which the graph is decreasing. So you might wonder, since you've got definite start and stop points, are you going to use brackets? And this is yet another kind of problem I messed up when I was a student and discovered the hard way that we don't have a lot of exceptions in mathematics. No, you're going to keep using open intervals. Okay, now that we have that straight, Let's find out what this X coordinate is. Um, negative five, negative six, negative seven. Okay. Negative seven goes to positive one. And here, one, two, three. So this is three. And this is five, six, seven. All right, so increasing instead of open interval of increase, let's just say increasing. We're going to go from negative seven to one. And that's all the increasing. 
they always go increasing, decreasing, constant. From three to seven. and constant. Constant from one to three. But this question also asks you about the domain and the range. Ooh, 61. That's interesting. Okay. So for domain, The graph starts on the far left x-coordinate and ends on the far right x-coordinate. But here, I would definitely use brackets. You can use brackets with domain and range when it's called for. A nice solid, definite starting place is wonderful. Negative seven to positive seven. The range is always trickier. because we're going to go from the lowest y coordinate to the highest y coordinate. This is negative one, negative two, negative three. This is one, two, three, four. So the range goes from negative three to positive four. And this helps show the difference between domain and range. Domain and range you can take as one category you can use brackets if it's called for in the domain and range, but you cannot use brackets in increasing, decreasing, and constant, even when you feel like you should be able to. And I agree with you. I got it wrong when I was a student. You just have to obey the rules. I hated obeying rules. Stop me if you have questions. This is pretty tricky. It takes some practice. OK. Those are the general ideas of increasing, decreasing, and constant as opposed to domain and range, except since we say where increasing and decreasing and constant are, by stating values on the x-axis, intervals on the x-axis. Um, these are considered subsets of the domain.
Okay. All right, now we've got some word problems. They're not really word problems. They're designed to show you how a graph can make solving a problem easier. See this, this um, has four or five different parts. Here's the story. A daycare center has 38 feet of divisor, dividers with which to enclose a rectangular play space in the corner of a room. The sides against the wall require no partition. That's pretty obvious. Suppose the play space is X feet long. Answer the following questions. All right, well, first we have to find ourselves a corner of the room where two walls meet. So we can let this be one wall. And we can let this be another wall. Ooh. So you've got your dividers. And you're going to make a little play space in the corner for the kiddos. There. And so you'll have your toys and stuff in there. Now they say that the length is X. Well, the, the length, that's the longest side. So I'm going to let this be X. And that means the width, well, we could say it's Y. But also, since X plus this equal 38, this side is going to be whatever is left after you take the X feet out of the 38 feet. So this side is going to be 38 minus X. And this side is going to be X. Now the first question says express the area of the play space as a function of X. Okay, well we know that area of a rectangle equals length times width. So that will be length X times width 38 minus X. There's our area. And indeed that's true. Now what this problem does is it introduces you to the concept that even applications, that is word problems, can have domains and ranges. In particular, they have domains. 
and how you decide what a domain is when you've got a word problem is you ask yourself what would make all this not true? Specifically, to find the domain of this problem, you would ask yourself, self, what would make the play area not a play area huh well stop and think about it if one of the sides were zero you wouldn't have a play area. You've got to have length and width. So let's figure that out. If I let X equal zero and 38 minus X equal zero, what would that mean? Solve for X. OK, well. Here I'm saying the length is zero and that's just X equals zero. So what do I know from this? I know that I cannot let X equal zero or I won't have any size of play area. Now, if I let 38 minus X be zero, then I'm letting the width be zero. Well, if the width is zero, all of the dividers are slam against the other side of the wall. There's no, no kid, no kiddo would fit. So if I solve for X here, I get X equals 38. So if X is 38, that's all the feet. That's all the feet of dividers I have, and I'm putting them all over here, and I don't have a width, so they're slam against this wall. So we cannot let X equal 38 either. However, we can let X be between zero and 38 just not equal to zero, and just not equal to 38. So, here's our domain. Okay, notice no brackets. That means that X cannot equal zero. X cannot equal 38, but X can equal any of the numbers between zero and 38, some of which would be ridiculous and you wouldn't use, but that is your domain. All right, now. They're asking you, what is the graph of a function? And after yesterday, what is the graph of the function? What function? The area function, the area of, um, of the play area. Area of play area is A of X equals X times 38 
minus x, which is 38x minus x squared, which is negative x squared plus 38x. You could always graph it. Go to y1 and say negative x squared plus 38x. Or you could think about what we talked about yesterday. And that is, first, this is a quadratic. Second, your leading term, negative 1, is negative. That makes this a cupped down parabola. There's only one cup down parabola there, and it's A. Now what they're doing here, this is our area function. If X equals something, then this is the area you get. If X equals something else, this is the area you get. Here's the maximum area. This is where the maximum area occurs. And this is what the length, the length X of this side has to be in order for you to have a maximum area. So all we have to do is look at our graph. And say, OK, what is X? Now, how are we supposed to know that? They kind of messed up on this because there's no way to tell exactly. Here, not on a grid. Oh, that's right, I can't draw on this. Anyway, that is the high point right there. The vertex is right there. So let's see what we have here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, we are 1, 2, 3, 4. We are almost at 20, but just a little to the left of 20. Or, since it's kind of hard to see, we can use what we used yesterday. We can find H because H will be the X coordinate of the vertex, and the vertex is a maximum point. So there is a way to solve this that doesn't necessitate estimating. Let's do it. Okay. Here A is negative one and B is positive 38. So H equals negative B over 2A, which is negative 38 over 2 times negative 1, which is negative 38 over negative 2, which is positive 19. So, notice what they're asking. Oh, the sides, blah, 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 a answer the questions. Okay, well, I'll do that. 
We now know that the X coordinate of the vertex is 19 because we calculated it. 19, H is 19. Now, are they going to ask us for the maximum area? We could find it, but no, it's not asking that. What it's doing is it's saying, what dimensions yield the maximum area? Well, let's see. X, this is the X that creates the maximum area. Let's go up here. We just discovered, well, okay, to have the maximum area, we're going to have X equals 19 feet. So all we have to do is come over here to discover what the width is it'll be 38 minus 19, which is also 19. And what does that tell us? That tells us that to get the maximum area, we're not going to use a rectangle, we're going to use a square. So the actual dimensions of the play space are going to be 19 by 19. Didn't really draw it very well, did I? But anyway, you get the idea. It's gonna be a square and it's going to be 19 by 19. Let's see if I can do that better. More convincingly, that looks better. 19 by 19, that's what will maximize your area. They're not even interested in what the maximum area is. They know they can get the maximum area by adjusting the length and the width. And we just found out that the way to maximize the area is to have a square. Okay. So you cogitate on that and we're going to do one more. We're gonna make a box, an open top box. So actually I am going to drag this over here so that I can make the drawing large enough for you to see. All right, this is what we want to make. And this is what we have. We have a piece of cardboard. We're, we're going to cut little squares out of each corner and then fold up the side. But the, wow, it's really little. This is going to be before we before we cut out the squares, six centimeters by six centimeters. 
That was the original size of the cardboard. Now it says corners are cut out of the sides and, and you can fold up the box. And it's uh, what we're finally going to be asked at the end is determine the dimensions that yield the maximum volume. So we're going to have to maximize. Let's see. This size, this side right here of the box, after I fold up the sides, will be X centimeters and X centimeters shorter. Because now this is the base of the box. After I've cut X centimeters out of here and X centimeters out of there. So this side is going to be 6 minus 2X. And this side is going to be 6 minus 2X. And then the height of the box is going to be the folded up side, and that's going to be X right here. So the volume equals length times width times height. So we're going to have 6 minus 2x times 6 minus 2x times x. And that's going to be our volume. And the first thing we're going to do is find the domain. Well, again, you stop and think about what would make that box not be a box. And that would be if the length is zero or if the width is zero or if the height is zero, you are not going to have a box. So we'll set them equal to zero. Six minus two X equals zero. Six minus two X equals zero. And X equals zero. So I'll add two X to both sides and get six equals two X. And then I'll divide by two and divide by two. So I'll have X equals three, and this will be the same. All right, so what does this tell us? This tells us this, X cannot equal zero and X cannot equal three, but X can equal all the numbers in between. So the domain is zero to three. And here it is right here, if you were to graph this, because now see it's got an X times an X times an X, it's going to be a cubic. It's not gonna be a parabola. And look over here. See, it's kind of shifted over to the side and this side is going to be slowly going down below the x-axis and then back up. So this is the only part 
we can use of this graph. And they're nice enough to give us where the maximum volume is. This is the graph of the volume. So 16 is the maximum volume that will occur if x equals 1. All right, so max volume Sixteen what? Cubic centimeters. And the um, the length of the square that gives us that maximum volume volume is if x equals one centimeter. That's how long it is. So the height, now we know that x is gonna be one. The height is gonna be one. The, um, the length and the width are the same, but the length is going to be 6 minus 2x, which is 6 minus 2 times 1, which is 6 minus 2, that's 4 centimeters. And the width is going to be the same thing, 4 centimeters. So there you go.